So, if you're a woodworker, even kind of a beginning woodworker, you should consider making one of these. Why? Because money. Now listen, I'm not suggesting you make the whole thing. I think you should just make the body, because they're not very big, and they're not very complicated, and there's a lot of money to be made on these things. If you go on eBay or look around custom guitar sites, you can see guitar bodies that are going for two, three, four hundred dollars, especially if they're nice and made out of fancy woods. And the body is really, really simple. Like, it doesn't look simple, does it? Okay, hold on a second. Now that I have it apart, you can see there's nothing to it. It is a slab of wood, bandsawed out into this shape, with one, two, three, four routes in it, and a bunch of holes. Can you bandsaw a shape, drill holes, and route cavities? Then you can build one of these. No joke. Here's the other reason that I think you should consider building guitar bodies for extra money. If your lumber rack is anything like mine, you've got a ton of offcuts that you maybe don't know what to do with. Right here I've got three mahogany boards, beautiful wood, but they're three feet long. What am I going to make out of them? I've got one piece of chestnut, two pieces of white oak, down here I've got some soft maple, up here I've got some rock maple. All of these are good woods. They're woods that can make great guitar bodies, or if they're highly figured, they could just be veneers over the top of other woods. Any wood that you would use to make furniture of could potentially be a really great electric guitar body. Even pine, like this slab I have up here, is now considered a high quality wood for musical instruments. For the guitar body blank, you're going to need a piece of wood 13 inches by 16 inches by 1 and 3 quarters, probably a little more than 1 and 3 quarters because you're going to want to plane it down a little bit. I am going to use this piece of California redwood, which I actually bought when I lived in California and it's reclaimed from a barn. So it's a couple hundred years old, bone dry, ready to go. Sounds good. Making the body blank is really straightforward woodworking. All you're going to need to do is joint both sides of the board. I use a hybrid plane and table saw technique, and you can watch a whole video on it if you're interested. Once you have two good straight edges, you can cross cut the board, and then you're just going to glue them up using regular tight bond. You'll want to use plenty of clamps and make sure it glues up flat. Minimize the seams as much as you can because you're going to have a much more professional looking product if it looks more like it's a single piece of wood. Once the body blank comes out of the clamps, then it needs to be planed down to an inch and three quarters. Most guitar blanks won't fit through most commercial planers. My planer's too narrow, so when I'm doing work like this, I prefer to use a planing jig. It's actually a pretty simple setup. It's a platform, a sled, and then you use your router to do the actual planing. The whole thing's a lot easier because I have this one inch wide carbide bit that's specifically made for planing or cleaning out the bottoms of dados. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. It makes the work go really quickly. It might seem that using a jig like this would be a giant pain and really time consuming, but in a lot of ways, it's actually better than using a planer. There's no snipe to worry about, and since I'm using a carbide bit and relatively soft wood here, I can take a really heavy bite with the router. I could do an eighth of an inch or even more. So usually I only have to do two passes. Plane one side, flip it over, plane the other side, and I'm done. The guitar we're making here is called a Telecaster. It's probably the simplest solid body electric guitar out there. And it's also the first one that was ever mass produced. They're really popular still with guitar players. I'm quite fond of them myself. Getting the shape and all the holes and routes is actually easy because there's a huge online community of people who build instruments like this at home, and they've produced an excellent set of blueprints. I'm going to link to the PDF down in the description. You can download that plan, print it out onto multiple sheets of paper, and then I'm going to tape the whole thing up into a big master template for this thing. Now my printer can't print exactly to the edge of each sheet, so I'm using a straight edge and a razor blade to just trim off a little bit of an edge. I'll cut out the outline of the body really, really carefully, 
spray it with Super 77 adhesive, and glue it down to my body blank. Band sawing out the body is really straightforward. Get as close to the line as you can without going over. Make relief cuts where you've got tight curves. Go slow. Take your time. You'll save yourself a lot of work later on. Once the shape is band sawed out, you're going to sand it right down to the line. And this doesn't have to be a complicated process. If you've got a spindle sander or an edge sander, that's great. But you can do this with really common tools. I've just got this little jig I cooked up with a cheap belt sander and uh, some construction lumber, which allows me to edge sand things and keep a nice 90 degree angle. That's going to do for all the flat parts and all the convex curves. For all the inside curves, I'm just going to throw a sanding drum into my drill press and sand those that way. If you don't have a power sander, that's still not that big a deal. You could totally just block sand this. All you're trying to do is get the edges smooth, take off all the wood right down to the line that you didn't get with the band saw, and keep everything square and even. At this point, you already have a saleable product. Peel off your blueprint, sand it down, and you have what's called a body blank. You can sell this to a repair person or a guitar builder who will do all the routing and drilling for the components themselves. And just this piece of wood right here might be worth $50 to $150, depending on the wood that it's made out of and your local economy. You also might sell it just to a DIY-minded musician, somebody who wants to take something like this and add their own pickups and hardware. And that person's going to do the routing and the drilling themselves because it's satisfying and they can say they did it themselves, and it's not very difficult. And since it's not very difficult, let's go ahead and do it. To do the cavities, I'm going to use a couple of different approaches. First, I'm going to use these clear Lexan templates that I made a couple of years ago, and they're made to fit the pattern bit of a router. I can screw them or double stick tape them down to the body of the guitar, and then just run around them with a top bearing pattern bit. It's really simple, just go slowly, little increments of depth as you go. Now for this specific instrument, it's not going to have a standard size pickup in the neck. It's going to have the special big thick one instead. And so what I need to do is make a custom hole and I don't have a template for that. But it's no problem. I'm going to draw out the hole that I need, do the corners with a Forstner bit on the drill press, hog out the middle with the router, and then for the edges, I'm just going to bring those in with a chisel as if I was doing a standard mortise. This is basic woodworking, it's no big deal. Routing the neck pocket is really straightforward. You just need to get together three pieces of wood that are the same thickness and about four inches long. Put double stick tape on them, line them up with the lines around the template, and then you'll have built yourself a routing guide that you can use with your pattern bit to route out the space where the neck goes. Now it's really good to either have the neck on hand or get specifications for how deep the pocket needs to go. This is one of the few areas of guitar building that's really critical. This thing needs to be a pretty exact depth. So double check on this with the client, or just leave it unrouted until you're ready to sell it. Now we're down to drilling the holes. If it's possible, use the actual hardware that's going to go onto the body. There's a little variation from one piece to the next, and different years and different models. If you don't know what hardware is going on it, go ahead and use the holes laid out on the blueprint. They should work fine for most things. At some point, you have to join all the different cavities together so the instrument can be wired. A Forstner bit or a spade bit works really well for this, and all you need is a continuous path from one cavity to the other, so it's not very difficult to do. You'll also need to drill for the input jack, and again, you can go with a spade bit or a Forstner bit. They both work fine. Now the guitar is almost finished. I'm going to use some mineral spirits to take the blueprint off the front, and I'm going to put a 1 8 inch radius on both the front and the back edges. This makes it a lot more comfortable to play. Now for most instruments, I'd be ready for sanding and finishing at this point, but this is a custom job for a client, and he wants some extra sculpting done to the body. I'm going to use a simple combination of hand and power tools to get those curves in, and when I like the shape that I've got, I'll sand it, stain it, and start shooting the clear coat. Now that the body's done, it's a good time to wire the thing up. Now I can wire up a guitar, but frankly, I suck at it. So, I'm going to have my buddy Alex do it. Alex Hi. is actually really good at soldering things. He solders up his own guitars, he makes pedals, 
all of that stuff. I modify pedals and I make them from kits. I wouldn't go say I make my own. Fair enough. To me, it's like making a pedal. Alex is super good at this stuff, and he's also been my friend since 1987. 87? 87, yeah. Maybe? So since we were seven years old? Way before you two. Yeah, yeah. Like a long time before you two. Second grade, Mrs. Martin's class. It's true, as when we met. Um, and he's also this channel's first subscriber and my first ever patron. So he went over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and checked out the, well, there weren't really any rewards then and there wasn't, there wasn't much of anything, but he still signed up to become a patron and now there's all that stuff. Being Rex's patron is his own reward. Oh, good. I love the interruptions. That's making the video look more professional. Anyway, he's finishing up the guitar right now and then we're going to get the neck on and string it up and we'll see how it looks. Now, I admit, I'm really happy with the finished product here. It's got kind of a combination of a custom guitar and a rustic vibe because I used this reclaimed barn wood. Now, I should mention that this video is really just an overview of building guitar bodies. It's not complicated, but there are a lot more details that you'd want to learn before you started doing this seriously. Um, I couldn't possibly cover all of that in a 13-minute YouTube video, but I'd be happy to do more content like this. So please leave me your questions and your comments down in the comments field, and let me know specifically what kind of stuff you'd be interested in seeing, and maybe I can make some more of these videos. Also, if you're thinking about building guitar bodies, you might feel like, uh, well, I don't play guitar, so maybe this isn't a good idea. The thing that's weird about that is that a lot of guitar builders either only play a tiny little bit of guitar, or some of them don't play at all and still make perfectly functional instruments. So you don't need to be a guitar player to build guitars. One thing that you could do is find a local player, particularly like a guitar teacher or a repair person, that you could sort of connect with and you could work together on making instruments. That person could give you feedback on the stuff that you're making and tell you what's good or bad, and they could also get you connected with clients. And between the two of you, you could come up with products that would probably really satisfy those clients. Uh, speaking of which, let's check back in with the client for this build and see if he's happy with his instrument. So Alex, you're the client. What do you, uh, what do you think of the final result? I love it. It's yeah? very comfortable. I love the uh, Strat style. Um, what are they called? Contours. Contours. You put Sculpting. it on the body. Yeah. Sculpting is very comfortable. It's the best, best feeling telly I've ever played. Yeah. What do you like? How do you like the uh, wood grain and the choice of wood? Like, how's the red wood? I think the red wood's really gorgeous. It's nice and light. It's not too heavy. Um, and it shows off some really pretty grain. I don't know if you can hear it. We'll get a close-up later, I think. But here along the, uh, the tummy contour, there is uh, quite a beautiful grain exposure right there. Awesome. So what should we do with it now? Well, we should play it. All right. Thanks for watching.